attached a ram mount to the fusion unit with the Phillips screws provided. Unhook the visor and move it to the side. Mount the headliner plate by sliding the plate over the visor clip. Secure the plate with the four providing self-tapping screws. The mount should be facing the front windshield. Place the fusion ram mount onto the compression plate on the bracket. Ensure the compression plate facing the front of the vehicle is secure into the designated cutouts. Tighten by turning the knob clockwise until the system is secure. For the express insulation, connect the fusion cable to the express insulation cable. Then plug into any cigarette lighter socket. You'll also notice an on-off button on the adapter itself. For advanced insulation, you will need the advanced insulation breakout cable and the power ignition cable. To attach the advanced install breakout cable, remove the vehicle's A pillar using the tools for your vehicle. Be sure to disconnect any cables connected to the A pillar. Run the fusion cable along the windshield to the passenger side. Connect the cable to the provided breakout cable. The fusion system has several advanced installation options, depending on the department's trigger and power source needs. Refer back to your user's guide upon the color codes of the wires. Be sure to tuck the cables out of the way of the side curtain airbag when concealing them in the headliner. Attach the white clip on the power ignition cable to the corresponding clip on the breakout cable. If no other connections are needed, tuck the cables out of the way of the side curtain airbag and return the A pillar and the weather stripping. Pull the loose wires from the insulation cable through the vehicle firewall to the engine compartment. Route the red and black wires to the battery and the orange wire to the ignition. The fusion breakout cable includes the option to connect the system to a light bar for triggered recording. Depending on the brand and specifications of your vehicle's light bar, the installation process will vary. Consult your light bar manual for instructions on tapping into your current setup. For power ignition setup, be sure the wires are firmly connected before crimping them in place. Then loom the wires prior to proceeding to the next step. Run your power and ground to a constant power source. The specifics of getting the cables from the cabin to the fuse box will vary from vehicle to vehicle. Secure the designated inline fuse to the red battery wire on the power ignition cable. Make sure to remove the fuse from the fuse holder before connecting the line to the battery. Secure a ring terminal to the black ground wire before connecting it to the negative end of the battery. After the ground is in place, connect the power wire's fuse end to the positive on the battery. Replace any removed fuse to fuse holder. Using the provided self-tapping screws, secure the wide-angle camera mount on the vehicle's backseat partition. Be sure the mount is positioned near the top of the partition. Slide the camera into the mount ensuring it is positioned with the cable extending to the passenger side of the vehicle. Aim the camera down toward the seat belt and line up the screw holes on the mount and the camera. Tuck the cable along the top of the partition, securing with zip ties if necessary to ensure the cable doesn't fall into the DTAD compartment. 
Attach the rear camera pin connector to the main fusion breakout cable at the passenger side door.